Welcome back to the All Things Dead podcast, podcast for everything in the Walking Dead universe, from the OG The Walking Dead, the spinoff Fear the Walking Dead, the other spinoff The Walking Dead World Beyond, any future Walking Dead projects, hopefully some Rick Grimes movies, anything that has to do with The Walking Dead can be found here on the All Things Dead podcast with your host, Steve Kachevsky. The video version can be found on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. That description will be in the episode description. Where to find the video version until I have the All Things Dead podcast YouTube channel set up. It can be found on my other podcast, the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. The audio version can be found on Spotify, Apple, Google, Anchor, anywhere you listen to your podcast. It can be found there. Just type in All Things Dead podcast. You can find it there. We are continuing with our rewatch, recapping of The Walking Dead. We are now on season one, episode two, Guts. It's it's crazy to go back and watch the show and see the where it started and where it's been now. But this is for all of you who have not watched the show, thinking about watching it, want to listen to a podcast maybe about it. Maybe you're watching it for the first time and you have feelings and some thoughts. Just know that everybody out there that's watched it is re-watching it, watching it for the first time. We all have the same thoughts and feelings. So we are here for you. Season 1, Episode 2, titled Guts, um, had some big shoes to fill from the very first episode. very first episode was very good. It was a very long episode. Then this kind of continues the trend of going to our normal about 45-minute mark. Um, Where we left off from the last podcast episode, going over episode one, and kind of where it ended. Um, We ended with Rick being trapped in a tank. His horse is being eaten by walkers. He lost his bag of guns and ammo. Someone comes across the radio and, you know, says, hey, asshole, like, yeah, you, and that's how it ends. Um, Walking Dead has a theme where sometimes they don't pick up right where it left off. It has to show you something else in the episode. So we pick up this episode where last time I told you it seemed, um, well, we, we, we figure out who, who, uh, where we figure out Lori, um, Rick's wife and son Carl are safe. They are with Shane and they're Shane and Lori are a thing. And so it goes back to wonder, like we talked about in the last episode, Shane is talking with Rick, asking how Lori is and something's wrong in Rick's marriage with Lori. So I had the question, you know, when you watch this, you go, you start to think, did Shane have something going on with Lori while they were married before the apocalypse? And then it was coming into question, why didn't nobody go get Rick? Like, why didn't anybody get him out? He was clearly alive. Yeah, he might have been in a coma, but he was still alive. Why did nobody try to get him out? It didn't seem like they did. So come to question, did Shane already have something going on with Lori before the apocalypse? But they have this relationship. They were kissing and stuff. And so this episode picks up with that. Um, We see that group that they're with. We still don't know much about these characters. Um, And I said from the first episode... Not a huge fan of Lori, even the way she acts then. And then, you know, she's having the conversation with the woman about, you know, which ones are poisonous mushrooms. And then she says she had to go find other things, goes out in the woods. And it was just going out the woods, you find out to meet Shane. And they basically get it on. And another reason about Lori I don't like from the just the little clips of the first episode. And then now Shane's asking her, you know, what took you so long? And she goes, well, the mushroom queen and... Um, everything like that. And then when she was even going out in the woods, um, you have Dale, who's the older gentleman with the RV standing on top saying, just stay close, be safe. Something happens, make sure you're close enough to where you can scream and we can come get you. And he, she's like, yes, mom. Like little comments like that already. You're like, eh, don't like this person. Um, her and Shane get it on. They look at, she has Rick's wedding ring. So at some point she had seen Rick in the hospital we, we don't know how she got that wedding ring. If she did get it, it would have to be during the apocalypse. Why would you take his wedding ring in the uh, hospital room? 
before the apocalypse. Um, so a, a lot of, some questions there need to be answered. Um, I don't know if they will or not, but those are some weird questions. But they get on in the woods, I guess. That's what you do in the apocalypse. And you could tell they're trying to keep this hidden. Um, probably from Carl. And yeah, it's a little weird. Um, then we finally get picked up in Atlanta where uh, Rick's in the tank. This guy over the microphone is trying to help him. And it's very funny of like, just run. That's all you got to do is run. Um, outrun the walkers. And um, I have to put my foot in my mouth because the last episode I said I like how they made the walkers not like you see in other zombie movies where they're like superhuman. And they can climb upstairs. They can do this. They can sprint. Like in the first episode, you see where they're all walking real slow. They're dragging their feet. And you can see how these walkers, these zombies look more like humans, more than zombies. And I think it kind of shows how not still fresh the apocalypse is because we talked about how it's been probably a few months. Everybody here, this group kind of understands how they work. Like when we met Morgan, he understands how they work. The rest of this group kind of, that group, they kind of, you know, they're living out in the woods and all this and that. So it just seems like... um. They look really human, so this apocalypse is still probably not even a year old. We only know have a couple months, but you see how everything just collapses very quick. Um, thanks to our guy over the radio, Rick is able to get directions to run down the street. We finally get to meet Glenn. He gets saved by Glenn. Um, now here's kind of where I put my foot in my mouth. Um, they get up that fire chute. They go up this fire chute. And they're safe because usually with the walkers, you know, if you get to high ground, these zombies, you should be okay. Then they start slowly climbing up the ladder. And I'm like, wait, I'm just putting my foot in my mouth. I thought last time it showed these walkers that were not like that. They get in a building. And now we meet this group. We have Glenn and we meet these other people in this group. And they are blaming Rick saying that they are going to die because of him because he came and he was shooting the gun to get to the street. You know, they were just there scavenging to get out of the city and because of him, they're going to die. Um, so Rick is not making friends. You know, he said he's there to find a refugee place. He's looking for his family. They quickly tell him there is no refugee. That's a pipe dream. That's not here. That radio broadcast was BS. So now Rick is really coming to grips of Oh man, like I've really screwed up. Now I've put these people in danger. How are we going to get out of this? They're surrounded in this department store with these walkers. And again, to put my foot in my mouth, some of the walkers are holding bricks, trying to blast through these doors. So now, yes, I've watched this. But again, this was, this comes out in 2010. I don't remember a lot of this happening. I'm used to what we've seen, so I don't want to ruin it. If this is the first time you're listening to the podcast because we're recapping the show, it's crazy that they're holding these bricks. They were moving pretty quick. The first episode they weren't. Now these are the kind of zombie walkers we have. Now remember, <clears throat> this is a world where they don't know what zombies are. We know what zombies are from watching movies and stuff. This is a world where they don't know what those are. So this is even more scarier to them because they don't know what this is. Then we meet a new character. We don't know any of these people. We only know Glenn. And then we hear gunshots. You finally meet, or not finally, excuse me, you meet um, Merle Dixon. They say Dixon, you go up and it's Merle. Racist, redneck, hillbilly um, character, um, Michael Rooker, or Brooker, or Rooker. I don't want to disrespect him. He does play in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, so he's a phenomenal actor. Um, we, we get to meet him. He's causing a lot of trouble. And this is, it was really awesome because Rick brings a human element. There, um, you meet a character named T-Dog. Um, Merle calls him the N-word. They get into a fight. Merle beats him up because he hits more the head with the gun, starts beating him up, punches Rick. When his back's turned, Rick knocks Merle on, on, um, on his uh, ass with the gun. And Rick is bringing this human element and saying like, it's us. There's only two types of people. You know, there's two types of meat, white and dark meat. Like, there's only us, the live and the dead. The only way we beat the dead is if we come together. So Rick is bringing this cop. He's a He was a police officer. He's bringing that mentality to it. 
He's bringing a human element to it because, like I said, this apocalypse only has to be a few months old. Um, he can already see things are slipping out. You have this apocalypse thing, you know, some of the human elements disappearing. He's bringing that. Um, but he does make a comment, you know, like, I'm looking for my family. And anybody who stands in the way, that's going to lose. And so, and then you see him holding his hand. And this is kind of important, I think, to pay attention to. Because when you see people do that and they're shaking, they're doing something that they don't like. They're doing something that's not them. So that type of person, he does not want to be. But he's trying to bring the human element. He's still trying to bring that, you know, he is a police officer. That's what he's, his career was before the apocalypse. Not, and that's where we really find out that the this refugee center is a bunch of BS. He said they have a group outside the city. They're trying to radio them. Now they got to figure out how to get out. Um, you know, they're not real happy with Rick saying that he did this. You know, it's because of him. Uh, we meet uh, Morales. He's he's not the leader of that little group, but he seems to be the only one that's level-headed. Calls him Rick Officer Friendly. We meet him. We meet... Um, yeah, Michael Rooker. Sorry, I was just thinking that again. Yeah, he plays Merle Dixon. We meet Morales. We meet T Dog. Um, Jackie. She she was one that gave. Rick was saying, "Well, what if we go underneath the building? We don't need to get out of the building. What if we go underneath?" She gives like, "Yeah, that every building has this." Um, of course, we had Glenn, and we meet Andrea. Um, Andrea is the one that was not happy with Rick. So now we're meeting the more people. You know, Rick. Probably thought he was alone. He met Morgan. He didn't know if there's going to be more people. So now we're meeting this group. Now they have to figure out how to get out of the building. So Rick comes up with, what if we try to go underneath the building? There's sewers. What if we go underneath of them? Uh, Jackie says, yeah, I used to work for this, this, you know, the, the I can't remember, like building planning, the, the city. And, you know, yeah, these buildings have these sewers. Glenn and Morales go under the sewer to investigate Come to find out that the walkers can be in the sewers too. So they are trapped outside the building and inside the building. Now, one thing about this is these walkers are scary. I forgot they look more like humans than anything else. The way they just look, it looks like you see in the movies. But like when they eat stuff, it is more gory. They're eating a rat. It's gory. They have the blood on their face. Um... They just don't look decayed. You could tell they're dead, but they just look more like people. So kudos to them. This just looks so real. And it looks, you know, pretty scary. And I think that's why uh, back then it was... Walking Dead is always considered horror. It has horror things. But back then, that's more horror than anything else. So now they have to figure out how they get out of this building. Now, Andrea and Rick pretty much make up a little bit like... I'm sorry I did that. Let's get you out. Rick's like, I'm going to try to get you guys out of here and do my best. Um, now we start to learn more about the walkers. Um, the walkers are breaking through, but when we get back up to the, to the top, they're trying to figure out where to go. They see these construction site where they've got cranes. They've got these, um, I guess you call them like U-Haul trucks. And so Rick's like, how do we get there? And now we come to find out how you really deal with walkers. Um, we already knew from the first episode they are attracted to sound. If if you talk too loud, there's a bang, they will come to that sound. So we figured out, okay, the walkers know sound. But this is where Rick, you know, he is behind. Everybody else has dealt with the apocalypse right when it happened. He was asleep. They said they are attracted to sound. They can kind of see you. And they can smell you. And now we come to find out if you if you don't smell dead, that's another way they can find you. So we're learning more about these walkers. You know, if you're on the high ground, essentially, I guess one was climbing up the ladder. But for right there, you know, they're up high. Um, they are attracted to noise. They can smell you. So if they know you're around, they're going to try to come get you. So <laughs> Rick has this grand idea to get these dead walkers they had killed outside to come in and they're wearing these trench coats. Um, yeah. And they cut open a walker and cover Glenn and Rick over the coat with guts and their hands and their blood to come up with this plan of, well, if they can smell, if you're dead, what if we do smell dead? Maybe we can walk through them. That is their plan. One thing from that scene that I completely forgot about, 
and again, Rick is trying to bring like, I know it's the apocalypse. I know we're a way out of civilization, but we can't forget what life was and we can't forget this human element. They're about to cut open the walker. He looks at the wallet and wants to acknowledge like, this is who he is. Does he have a family where he has a picture of a girlfriend or a wife? He was like us, you know, he used to worry about bills and work. And now this has happened to him. And he said if he finds his wife and kid, he finds Lori and Carl, he will tell them about this guy. He just looks at his driver's license. I will tell them about this guy. Because of him, we are able to survive. So Rick is bringing that human element. Everybody's looking at him, and it's kind of coming back like, yeah, we can't forget that we're humans. We can't forget, you know, what, what it was. So now we see them covered in blood and feet and hands, and they're walking through the, the walkers. And it's working. They're coming up to them. They can kind of see them, I guess, but they're more on smell and, and noise. They, so Rick and, and Glenn have to kind of walk through them like a walker. They're dragging. They're doing this. And it's working. They are moving through. So now this is a big thing to know. Maybe how to get through the apocalypse. If there's a place that you've got to go, put the blood on you. Don't let it touch your eyes and your skin. And you can move amongst them. And that's a huge thing that they just learned the apocalypse. So what I like at the beginning of the very first episode in this episode, they're going to go through steps, it seems like, in this world. Um, but of course, things can't go right. And this is another where I have to put my foot in my mouth. It starts raining and it starts washing off all the blood and stuff. They can smell them now. They smell alive. And Rick and Glenn now have to fight through them to get to this construction site. Well, as they're doing this, you see the walkers like jogging and slash sprinting. <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching this like, please, don't let this be like another movie. I just said in the first episode and uh, and then the last episode podcast where we have, they just, they walk slow. We don't, aren't going off of these movies. This is very unique. This is very different. Now they are sprinting almost, jogging at them, and then they get they have to hop they have to hop over this fence, and they're getting the key so they can get to like this U-Haul thing. Then you see them climbing over the fence, like what the hell is that? Like the first episode, they were just you know limping and this and that, and they look kind of more decayed. Then you get is it because they're the city? Was there something in the water for these to these walkers? What the hell is going on with that? So now you're dealing with, at the beginning here, this crazy walkers where they can climb over fences. They can almost climb up, climb up ladders. They can hold bricks and break down into these glass doors. Like, let's be different, okay? Let's not do this. Hopefully these walkers will change. And again, as this is going on... Um, you're seeing where our group has been trying to contact people and we don't know who that was. Well, now we flat we go back to where Rick or uh, Lori and Carl and Shane and Dale and they hear something over the walkie and they come back. It's T-Dog. T-Dog has been trying this entire episode to contact their other group. We had no idea who they were. Now we know this group with T-Dog and Andrian Morales and Merle are, uh, are acquainted with where Lori and Carl are. And Rick has no idea. Rick has zero idea. So now we're like, oh my gosh, they have to escape. He has to get to his wife. He has to confront Shane about this. Like this is, yeah. Um, Andrea before had talked about her sister. Um, they finally get on the radio. They can only hear a little bit, but T-Dog finally gets words out. They're trapped. And it, I think it's important to pay attention how Shane and Shane seems to be the leader of the group. They go to him and ask him, probably because he's a police officer. He is very alpha male. He says, like, we're not going to go after him. We cannot sacrifice more people to go in there and get them. And and this, this woman um, says, you know, my sister's there, like she's trapped. So that must be Andrea. Andrea talked about her sister. This has to be Andrea, Andrea's sister. Now, I was paying attention to this as a leadership style because you see Rick, he's trying to do everything he can to get them out. Yeah, he kind of caused this maybe um, honest mistake. He's doing everything he can. He's going out there on the front line. He had gone out there to try to get them out. Um, he stuck up for them when Merle was going crazy and had done meth or cocaine, whatever he was on. Shane said we are not going out there, and he said that if she's trapped in that building, she's good as gone, and that's just something we have to deal with. Like, is that sometimes in leadership roles, that's kind of what you look for, but that's like sports. 
when you're dealing with that, that's not what you say or somebody's going to lose their sister if you have the opportunity to go save them. So I was paying attention to that as Shane as a leader. Even from first episode, he made comment, like little snippets. And then once that said, you go back and rethink the whole episode, look at Rick. Rick doesn't know these people, but he's like, I'm going to do what I can, bring in that human element to it. So, so far, Rick is going on the front line being this leader of that little small part of the group, which I think is very important. And then you hear Shane say that. So now, if they can survive, and he finds out about Shane and what's happening, we're, we're, we'll, we'll see what happens. I That's going to be very interesting to find out. And again, they, you know... Um, Glenn and Rick are able to get to the the uh, U-Haul huge truck. Now they got to figure out how to get these walkers out again. They're attracted to sound. Use that to our advantage. Breaks into this nice Dodge Challenger or Charger, very nice car. They get the alarm going. Very smart. And have Glenn drive the car with the alarm going off to pull a bunch of walkers to him. Rick can pull up the U-Haul and grab everybody. That's what happens. Big thing that shocked me that I... Kind of remembered, um, Rick had gave T-Dog the key to unlock Merle because Merle was handcuffed on the roof. T-Dog was going to get it to him. He drops it in the drain and has to leave Merle up on the roof. Then he, like, chains the door to make sure no walkers can get in it. And last time, we, and then that they just leave Merle. And it's like, oh, my God, they left Merle on the roof. And your opinion, some people are going to say that's great. But this human element, like you didn't need to leave him up there. But it was great to see they, they got out. Rick got the group in the U-Haul, took off. Glenn's and his nice new Dodge, Dodge Charger or Challenger took off. They got out. And that's how we end this. So we this is just fantastic because you get a lot of action. You get a lot of planning. There's a lot of like suspense. These walkers are just like these zombies. These walkers are like su- superhuman. They're climbing over fences. They're carrying bricks they can sprint like all this stuff it's it's crazy um so now hopefully in the next episode we can see that rick can go be with his family it's just really it's a small world where he runs into this group he's going to atlanta looking for his family looking for this um um protection place the shelter and it's not there but he runs into these other people he probably thinks he has these people to help him. Crazy to know that they're associated with Lori and Carl. Are. So I and see in episode three, we should be able to see Rick be, be reunited with his wife Lori blah, and his son Carl. Then we're gonna that's gonna have to be figured out. Okay, how's he gonna handle the Shane thing? Is he gonna know? Are they gonna tell him? Are we gonna find out why no? But did they even want to save him? I think I don't know because. Right before Shane and Lori got it on, they were looking at the ring. She did take it off, which I was like, okay. But they are looking at it, and Shane's looking at it weird. So I was like, did they try to save him? Did they think he was dead? Who, like, who knows? So we're gonna. That's gonna be a lot of falling out. That's gonna be things having to deal with. Um, if Shane's like in love with Lori and Rick's back, how's that gonna work? If Rick finds out, does he kill Shane? Like it's, these are uh, questions. And then Merle is on the roof. Do, how what are they going to deal with that? Does he have anybody in that group that is family? Um, are they just going to leave him there? How far is this group away from Atlanta? Like just just questions. But first two episodes of this show are really really good. A um, lot of horror vibes, a lot of suspense vibes, a lot of tension. Very, very good. If you guys are re-watching it with me, I hope you're enjoying it. If it's your first time watching it, I hope you're enjoying it and continue to watch it. You get, There's people out there like us, with you, that have these same thoughts if you're re-watching or watching it for the first time. So thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. We are going to continue to re-watch the show. We will talk about Season 1, Episode 3 next time. I think there's only five episodes five or six in the first season so it will fly by um, and then we'll get to season two and I believe that's where they start being like about 16 episodes so thank you so much again the video version can be found on the coach Steve show YouTube channel until I can really see if I need to make just an all things dead YouTube channel but the video version can be found there that's my other podcast the coach Steve show there's a bunch of other stuff on there you're going to see if you look for the um, all things dead parts 
the audio version with the podcast version can be listened to Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you're listening to your podcast. That's where it can be found. Um, again, thank you guys so much for listening. Please like, subscribe, review, all that stuff. It helps me out so much. I will see you guys next time when we watch episode three of season one of The Walking Dead.